Good morning. Today we will be looking at the essay Nation Language written by Edward Camo Brathwaite. Nation language is a term which was coined by the author Brathwaite and we will be looking at the details of it in this essay. The essay has been divided into two parts for the sake of convenience and we will be dealing with the first part today. The author Edward Camo Brathwaite was born in 1930 in Barbados, an island in West Indies. He died very recently in the month of February 2020. He was known as a poet, historian, literary critic and academician. He had his primary and secondary education in his native town, Bridgetown, Barbados, and later he went to the UK where he obtained his honours degree in BA History from the Pembroke College, Cambridge, and then later received his PhD from the University of Sussex. He went to his native land of Africa immediately after his education, and then later he returned to the uh, Caribbean islands. He served as the education officer in the Ministry of Ghana and he has also served as a lecturer in various universities of West Indies and Jamaica. He was one of the co-founders of the Caribbean artist movement and he is credited with the publication of the journal Savaco under the Caribbean artist movement. His major works include poetry collections and historical works. His volumes of poetry include The Arrivance, A New World Trilogy, Other Exiles, Black and Blues, and Third World Poems, which explore the complex Caribbean identity using native rhythms and diction. His other historical works include the development of Creole society in Jamaica, 1770 to 1820, which is an in-depth study of the colonial plantation during 50 critical years of slavery in the Caribbean. His other major work include a history of the voice, the development of nation language in Anglophone Caribbean poetry. This book was published in the year 1984 and it has been considered as a significant contribution in the field of criticism. The essay prescribed for study, Nation Language, is taken from this book. The essay, Nation Language, traces out the role of nation language in the Caribbean islands. So we'll quickly have a look at the Caribbean islands. So the Caribbean is a region of the Americas that consists of the Caribbean Sea, its islands and the surrounding coasts. Some of the familiar Caribbean islands uh, names are Anguilla, Barbuda, Barbados, the British Virgin Islands, Dominica, Grenada, Martinique, Saint Martin, Stasia, Saint Vincent and so on. And this Caribbean islands, this group of islands which is called an arch archipelago encompasses more than 7,000 individual islands in a region of approximately 2,000 miles. And there are 13 sovereign island nations and 12, independent ter 12 dependent territories uh, with close pol uh, political ties to Europe and the United States. The original inhabitants of the Caribbean islands were believed to be the Amer Indians. Four tribes of people are named especially the Tainos, Siboni, Carib, and Arawak. 
So the author begins by saying that the history of the Caribbean did not begin with Christopher Columbus landing in ba- in the Bahamas. The islands were already inhabited by the Siboney, Taino, Arawak and the Carib people from the mainland America. The Siboney were a food gathering and hunting people who might have migrated from the Florida in the southern North America and they were more or less killed uh, by other Amerindian peoples, American Indian peoples when they moved into the islands. The Arawak are believed to have come from the northern South America and they settled on a number of Caribbean islands and they lived by farming. And they were all often known by the names Taino and Igneri. Later, the Caribbean people, the Carib people moved into the Caribbean islands and pushed the Arawak people out of their places. So they were displaced in many places like Hisp- Hispaniola, Puerto Rico and the eastern parts of the Caribbean islands. So the history that is known to us is from the time of 1492 when Christopher Columbus is claimed to have discovered the uh, Caribbean islands. So after Columbus's arrival, there were mainly four European countries which took control in different parts of the Caribbean islands. They include Spain, France, Britain and the Dutch people, probably from the Netherlands. The ultimate result of this colonization was the destruction of the Amerindian culture and society. The native people of the Caribbean islands, the Amerindians, the names that we mentioned before, the Caribs, the Arawaks, the Taino people, the Sibonis, they were all marginalized from the mainland of the Caribbean islands and their culture and society was completely destroyed. And the colonizers started plantations on most of these Caribbean islands and labor was imported from Africa, especially the western part of Africa, in the form of slaves. Brathwit says that it was from Ashanti, Conga and Yoruba that these slaves were brought to the Caribbean landscape. And another major effect of uh, the Western intrusion and colonization was that there was a lot of mixing up of languages. So with the Europeans coming in, with with the Spanish people, the French, the British and the Dutch people coming in, they declared that wherever they had control, wherever they were ruling, they would have these official languages, They're the colonizers official languages as the language of public discourse, conversation and uh, of obedience and command. So these slaves were forced to speak in the official languages. And that's how the mixing up of language starts slowly. Brathwaite calls this process interculturation. He says that the language was one of the major aspects of the culture that was greatly affected by this interculturation. When the language of the slaves, when the native language of the slaves are considered, they were often seen as inferior. We know that language often acquires the power position depending on who is in power. So the African languages, the languages from Ashanti, Congo and Yoruba were considered inferior and these imported languages were um, submerged completely. So in the attempt of speaking the official language, the slaves, they started mixing up the official language with the slaves language. 
and that is how we have the first form of pigeon coming in where for the sake of communication the slaves from africa were forced to speak in the language of the colonizer and they came up with this pigeon form of language so that's how this underground language the language of the slaves transformed itself into new form and in the words of camo brathwit it was moving from purely african form to a form which was african but which was adapted to the new environment and adapted to the cultural imperative of the european languages in post colonial discourse we often talk about three processes which are called adopt adapt and adapt the first stage is where the colonized people adopt whatever is the colonizers either forcefully or willingly mostly it is forcefully so these slaves they adopt the english language they try to learn the english language and speak as it is forced on them the second stage is where they become adapt they start adapting the language for their particular use and that is when this interculturation of language happens that is when this mixing up of language happens so for their convenience the slaves started to speak in an english that was kind of african in nature but not exactly an african language neither an a proper english language so this term interculturation was derived from the latin inter meaning between and cultural meaning culture so interculturation can be taken as the combination it is the sum of all relations and interactions between different cultures through meetings and debates so one major achievement of the post colonial interculturation or rather one major effect of this intercultural interculturation in language was that it defied the official languages you might be familiar with the play tempest written by shakespeare so there are two characters in this tempest whose name names become relevant now the one is prospero a magician and a prospective king who was exiled from his land and who lives in this island and the other character is caliban who is a native of that island and who becomes a slave to prospero so one conversation between prospero and caliban is of importance in this context prospero says and he forces caliban to learn the language learn his language and caliban very often replies that he has learned the language of prospero not for any other purpose but he wanted to use the language he wanted to make the language um uh, useful by cursing prospero using a language that he could understand so caliban's version of language was a defiled version of language from prospero's perspective so the process of interculturation has defiled one of the major effects of interculturation of language is that it defiled the official language we have also looked at the concepts of pidgin and creole in the previous class pidgin is that form of language uh which comes out of the communication between people belonging to two or more languages and it is not a first language but creole is a language which was at first a pidgin but has transformed and be- has become a first language for the later generation so for the caribbeans 
this nation language that edward camo bradford is talking about is a creole a creole which has developed from this interaction between the slaves and the and the european colonizers and this creole is something which they become proud of now nation language according to bradford refers to the language mixture due to the interculturative process of the african languages brought to the caribbean by the slaves long ago and the language of the european settlers so that's where it becomes relevant the f one, one of the major points that bradford talks about is the educational system of the caribbean islands he says that the educational system has contributed much to the inferiority complex of the caribbean people the educational system insists on english as the primary language or in insists on english as a spoken and the medium of academic language and they taught works of english heritage bradford says that uh the students of uh the caribbean education system are taught of shakespeare george eliot jane austen the british literature and the literary forms and these models which they have nothing very little to do with and uh these models which do not complement to their life in the caribbean islands So Bradford comes to the conclusion that people were forced to learn things that had no relevance to them. So the educational system focused more on the foreign lessons rather than their own cultural matters. He talks about how this affects the cultural disaster areas. Cultural disaster areas are uh, those areas of the world where the indigenous culture was destroyed by the imposition of an alien culture of the colonizer so caribia caribbean islands have become a cultural culture culturally disastered area and he attributes the reason for that to the educational system of the caribbean islands which give primary importance to the western model rather than the indigenous model He says that the educational system offered literary models which were more familiar to the British people rather than the Caribbean people. They were given models of Sherwood Forest or Robin Hood, whereas Nanny of the Maroons, an indigenous hero heroine, uh, an ex Ashanti queen mother of the 18th century, uh, she was an 18th century leader of the Jamaican. um maroons or the jamaican africans who had escaped from slavery in the america in the 17th and 18th centuries and mixed with the indigenous people of the americas so the literary models also were of english rather than jamaican or the native the perceptual models the models of perception that were given to them was also english in nature He says that the students uh, of the Caribbean education system are taught of snowfall of which they have no familiarity, whereas they find it difficult to write about the hurricane, which is a daily living experience for the Caribbean people. So the education system does not equip the Caribbean people to talk about their living experiences, but rather. it only equips them to talk about the uh exp the romanticized experiences of the western culture and he also says that this system has made the children unconsciously accept the western aspects rather than the native traditions he gives an example of the caribbean children who write their essays on snowfall and having seen the images of snowfall 
they try to attribute that to their native land and hence they talk about the, the white snow fields and the corn haired people which inhabited such a landscape so in this first part that we talked about edward camo brathwaite introduces us to the caribbean islands he talks about the original inhabitants of the caribbean islands and then uh he also talks about the colonization and how that has impacted how that has impaired the perception and the uh and the culture of the caribbean islands the people in caribbean islands so we will wind up for today and then we'll continue the remaining in the next class the next class will be about the characteristics of the nation language we'll be defining what nation language is and we'll also be looking at the characteristics that brathwaite attributes to the nation language thank you